Hey guys, I gotta say I'm pretty hungry, but things are about to change because I got myself a red-eared slider, which is a foreign species to Texas. And this is season number three of the Wilderness Living Challenge. I'm here with Bob Hansler, and we're gonna turn this guy into a meal. Be nice to get another catfish. That's a good eating. Kind of running low on bait. Not having super good amounts of luck with the fishing. Mostly just losing bait constantly. Fishing's one of those things that either goes or it doesn't go. Check these lines here, see if we got anything to eat. These lines are set all the time. We've always got we've always got them baited. Set overnight. And uh, do you have any limits on number of lines, Bob? Not too many. A uh, number of hooks in the water for trot lines. Um, and we, we have all these tags. The PVC has got the marking on, so you need to be able to check them within certain limitations right. if you're gonna be fishing make sure you have the licenses make sure you're doing it legally ethically at all times there's a right way to do it and there's a wrong way because we have we can only have one line in the water at a time that's it there in Canada that's it and no set lines they have to be monitored there active monitored stripped, empty hooks empty hooks the whole yeah. thing it's better than pulling it back without bait it means something's out there eating yeah, that's a heck of a lot uh, more easier to do survival when you can set as many lines and hooks as you want. Oh, definitely. In Canada, you have to be actively fishing or monitoring your line with a bell. You can only have one hook in the water at the same, at one time. Well, it's, you can have multiple hooks, but one, one line. It's not a bad idea sometimes. <laughs> People come up here and they abuse it at times. Yeah. Like we'll go up the river and there'll be 100, 200 lines out with PVC pipes hanging in the water. And people just leave their tack and leave fish dead. And... Uh, you know, it, it's not for everybody. From a from a wilderness living perspective, it's a good thing. But from oh, yeah. from a management issue, from a man management perspective, no. I love my fish. I yeah. love I love my my animals out here, and anybody that's out here kind of abusing that or or making things die for no reason. No, it's and horrible. we're and we're out here eating everything we're gonna catch, and we don't even have that many lines. We've only got four lines out. Four lines with a few hooks each. Yeah. But we're about to try and go and clean it up, maybe change uh, camps, see about finding a better spot to fish out and going after the monsters, get some big guys. Let's check the rest of these lines, see what's up. These are a little land bridge that we made, we use all the time. We got our PVC pipes over here. We got a bell set up. And then all we do is pull them in and see if we got anything. Mm. Nothing on there either. Nothing, no bait, nothing. And the last line over here. This one looks like it might have been disturbed. You can tell by the line because it's making a left hand turn instead of going straight out. So it might be wrapped in the log again. I don't know, it is there. Wrapped up again. We might be able to get it out, but it's wrapped up. No, it is over there, under the log. So that's really been the Achilles heel of this spot and the reason why we're moving, right Bob? We're taking off. Look at all these trees out here. Yeah, there's trees deadfall all along the shore here. And if we catch anything, it, they just wrap up and that's it. We never see them again. So we are going to try another spot upriver today because we're tired of losing fish all the time. Done all right with all the other animals, but it's time to go after something. Yeah, we need that, something. That we few catfish, I need some more of those. The catfish was really key yesterday as far as keeping our energy levels up. The mammals are good, but if you don't get a fatty one, it's just like eating a can of tuna all day long. Oh, I got catfish was like an energy drink. That was amazing. So we need some more cats. We need a gar, something like that, something big. So 
good. We're gonna pull up and have a look. Got these lines set here with the bells on them. That's all we do. We just sit in the bottom with uh, some big hooks and some liver on there, some real big hooks. All the baits on here still, that's good. We just find a big chunk of liver that must have dropped. So that'll be good bait. It's all covered with ants and maggots. That's gotta be from yesterday. Go get that line unstuck. Yeah. Yeah, use the probe around with the spear. See if anything attracts it. Log can be moved, probably not, eh? It's it's in the it's in the sand. Alright, I don't think that's gonna happen. We might lose another hook, we might lose another line. The whole rig. So this is a rig we had up last night. So you tell me what kind of fish is big enough to take a hook that's that size and bend it. Think about that for a second. There's fish in the river that are that big that can bend that hook. So that was one of our set lines that we found the next morning wrapped, straightened out completely. So the fish wrapped around a branch and fought its way out. That's pretty intense, man. There's some big fish in here. And I want to see them. So we're going to keep at this until it happens. We've got a bite here. I feel like tugging. Bob said we've got to wait a little bit. We both, we both got the line in our hands right now, feeling what the, <laughs> whatever, whatever it is is doing. Chewing on it. This is it. We had to reset the line. We couldn't bust the other line off. Um, so we got a, we got a reset. So we got actually two sets up here. All three still there? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, there's some on this bulb. Get this one. So that that hard shell, that's a, a red 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 eared slider. Red eared slider. Yep. Uh, good eating, but but not good for here. It's not bad eating. It's a little tricky. You got to know what you're doing as far as getting the meat out of there, because uh, these shells are almost unbreakable. But yeah, they're all over the place. Very few things actually get to eat them, but invasive. Totally. Invasive, so you want them out of here. Absolutely. Yeah, you got limits or anything on that? No limits on it. Take as many as you want. So there's a there's a whole trick to this guy? Oh yeah, so turtle wrangling 101. This is not like the soft shell turtle. This is your hard shell red eared slider. Okay, so hook's gonna stay in there just to make sure he didn't get away just yet. But uh, the entire shell rock hard. I mean, you can take a hammer to it and it's not gonna break. You're gonna take your hands, your fingers up here and you're gonna grip onto the shell. You can even flip him over, and in that way he can't get to you. But you don't wanna have your hands down here because those sharp claws will come back, and he'll either uh, scratch you with them, or he can push off with his claws and get out of your hands. Right, so I don't know if people are seeing, but the feet and the head all retracted. Mm -hmm. So to get a turtle to, to take his head out, a lot of times you push him forward through the sand. It's almost a natural reaction. He's not gonna do it for me. But he's in there, he's doing all right, and uh, that's a good piece of turtle meat. So the idea is we're just going to grab the edge so they grab can't the get the feet. Yep, so he can't pry your fingers right. he off can't of the shell. pull his feet out and whip around on them. Oh yeah, and these guys are fast. So once, you're, once, you're, once they've gotten out of your hands, it's over. They're gone. So if you guys are just joining us, this is a Wilderness Living Challenge. We're on day three. Uh, no, day four. Day four, the man. Big correction. We're going together. So yeah, they are blurring together. After a while, you just think all you, all you think about is food all day long. But uh, yesterday, Bob hooked into a big giant gar. Oh, that six, seven footer. Yeah. Yeah, a big one, and uh, that's what it does. Like this is all news to me, man. But that's a uh, metal leader, which we something similar would use for uh, pike fishing back in Canada because they got big teeth too, but not like that. Uh, alligator gar. Alligator gar. No, that doesn't compare to our northern pike. So you can see what it did, it completely frayed through that uh, metal leader. That was 30 seconds. Yeah, right? 30 second fight and that's it. So you gotta basically grab it in real fast. But that's what we're going after today and more. We've got a few different avenues we're exploiting today. Uh, Gopher is one of them, we might get to. 
uh, we're still looking for the big boon animals. Like we want, we still want a big alligator guard. We still want a big uh, a, a boar or a pig. I want a big giant catfish. And a big catfish would be nice. Yeah. A big monster. A big slab. A big slab. We've went, we've had a couple two pounders. It's just enough to just uh, whet your appetite. Yeah, and then we're good. It's good eating, good fatty meat, really filling and easy to eat. But if you're just joining me, you got to go back and start from the start from the beginning. Because we've covered a lot of different things in this, man. Some weird stuff has <laughs> you're, been eaten. You're laughing, but we've we've eaten. Oh, it's been amazing. Some really exotic foods that you can't yeah. get, you know, all in one place, all in one restaurant. Put it that way. Not at all. Yeah. Not at all. A lot so. of creatures that nobody ever sees because they're nocturnal. And man, we're out here in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And, and weird things come out in the dark. And the thing is, we're just getting started. Yeah. So if you're new, if you're new to me, you're new to Bob. This is Bob Hanser. We're in Texas, and we're doing it, guys. We rock. We're doing the Wilderness Living Challenge, man. Rock it. Every day. Every day. Lighting fires in here has been pretty simple. Because uh, the woods, everything's so dry, you just have to get it started. But these little plants here, kind of last year's weed plant, have been good for tinder. All we're doing is breaking it up and we're doing a... That's it. And we light that with a lighter. That's our start. That's what stays dry enough to get our fires going. So. There's a patch of what, around here where the grasses are. That's all we're doing is collect a bunch of that. So in no time at all you get a pretty good pile. Bust that up. That's your fire starter. There's big logs of wood everywhere like this. I'm only 10 steps from camp and I've got enough wood pretty much for the whole day really. All we have to do is be careful about the, the ants because they're kind of on everything. And I didn't think I was going to react at all to the ants but I got a couple, a couple pus balls here. And I was told if I got bit long enough that toxin would go inside and then it would well up. So you can see the little pimples of pus and those are eventually going to pop. That's basically from picking firewood up. So what you want to do when you pick up the firewood in Texas, pick it up, and if the ants scatter all over the place, the little red, tiny little red ants on them, then check your hands, brush them off. You can smack them like a mosquito, and that takes care of them. But that's a big thing here. Uh, so while fire, gathering firewood is easy, the consequences are kind of bothersome. It's been about three or four hours since I ate last and I'm already hungry. These uh, protein and fats don't last a long time in your belly. You gotta eat constantly to stay up. Just gonna grab a couple of smaller twigs here. You always wanna check to see if there's any scorpions too. If you lift up a big log, you can, there's always a good chance you'll find one underneath them. Just gonna grab these. Behind me is the result of yesterday's fire. It rained, uh, we didn't do anything special with it, but it's persisted. So Bob told me it's not really difficult to keep a fire going for the long term if you're heating up food. So that's what we were doing, using the Dutch oven to basically preserve our food long term. Every once in a while I throw a couple logs on there. It's really not a big deal, but um, you know that heat has to stay on the food all the time or it's gonna spoil. The idea here is to spark this back into flame. We'll put the rack on and we'll put our, our reserves on. We have, right now we're day four, we have turtle soup reserve. We have almost a full groundhog. We ate that this morning for breakfast. Both of us, before we left, we hammered that in. And uh, the, the, the lifespan on that is probably about two hours or three hours of, you know, then you're starting to be pretty much hungry again, full starving. So we got to keep on top of the calories. Let's get this fire going and uh, Let's get some heat on that food before it spoils. It's hot out here. It's really hot. You can see I've basically used the coals from overnight to start this fire. I haven't used a lighter at all. Let's let the heat do its work. And we're going to have a bunch of the nice coals to keep our food from spoiling all day long. How feel? How feel, man? Dragging ass? <laughs> Moving slow. Still feel great. High on life. Yeah, I feel the same. I feel hopeful. Hopeful. I feel slow, but I don't feel bad. 
I'd like to in the next hour go ahead and, and walk a little bit up this up this creek. Just just two, three hundred yards is all. Yeah. On this level. Have a peek. If we just don't get like either a big ass fish caught back here in one of these pools. Uh, because the pools coming from the river, a lot of big fish will get trapped up in there. If we can pull those out, that'd be amazing. And then more of these mulberry trees. You know, every fifth one is just absolutely covered. Yeah, we, we've, with we've, a pocket of them. we've cleaned up this area here, eh? Yeah. We've got to move on. It's we've, about spent. We spent this spoil, this, uh, the spoils from the area. We, we've kind of reached the limit of what we can do here. So It's been good to us. It's been good, but it's we time to find something else. Time to move on, man. We can't stay here. That's Maybe the, some wild pecans up the river or something. That'd be nice. It'd be, yeah. Oh yeah. All right, we gotta start. We gotta explore, but we're gonna. We're, you can't abandon camp, or we're gonna be in trouble. We've got enough meat right now. I feel good on energy. This is the time to do it. We just gotta lug it around. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Big cast iron's not easy to, easy job lugging around in the bush. So. No. The idea here is to have their fire going. We're gonna fill up our food, and then we're gonna start exploring, expanding out beyond the boundaries of what we've been able to do here. So we've got some beads up the line. Yeah. And see what we can do. I'm looking forward to a bit more diversity, right? I just want a handful of honey. Yeah, yeah you guys stick around. There's going to be a, a honey show. Not from a beehive. Not a commercial beehive anyway. A no, wild one. Yo, stick around for that, man. That's going to be a bit of a, a bit of a thing. A bit of a thing. Bit of a learning curve for that one. Wild honey? N neither of us have ever done it, so... <laughs> it's gonna be interesting. You gotta be smarter than the bees. Smarter than the bees. I think we're smarter than the bee. So you might think it's a little bit of a cheat that we're sleeping in a. Oh, I gotta put these down. That we're sleeping in a trailer, going back in and out, using refrigeration and all that. But uh, we gotta haul these cast irons in and out every day, and we're putting them in the refrigerator so our food doesn't spoil. Probably would be easier just to pitch a tent and tend the fire. I mean, relatively speaking, you'd have to wake up every once in a while and you'd always run the risk of spoiling your food. But these cast iron pots are not small or light. They're really heavy. So this small one here, oh, small. I say small, but it's not small. Not that small anyway. Is our uh, emerald bird. If you guys are just joining me, you gotta go back and check to see what that is, because I forget. But uh, it's packed full of onions too. So we got a bunch of onions in there, a bunch of bird. And that's uh, from, what day did we shoot that bird on? Day two. Day two? two so it's two days old now? Yeah. It's getting old. We gotta get onto some new stuff, man. So, but this is all we have, so it has to keep us, keep us energized. So we're gonna heat this guy up and uh, get some food in us. So, so wood-wise, you're saying this stuff's not good. Back home, that's like that'd be like prime wood. We don't get smoke like like that. Like you have, we just started that from nothing. I threw all that on. Big after logs. a night of rain. After a night of rain. <laughs> yeah. yeah. After a night of rain. I would hate to have to bake something for three, four, five hours with that. I'd have to tend it. I'd have to just tend it and tend it. Otherwise, mesquite, oak, throw it on there, make the coals. Those coals will stay good for five, six hours. It's about perspective. Yeah. Because in Canada, that's that's uh, about as good as you can get. Oh. Uh, <laughs> if you're no. lucky. No, there's a reason why they export the mesquite up north, man. Yeah. It smells good, tastes good. All right, man, so how do you clean that guy up real quick? Uh, the Coles Notes version of it. Very carefully. Very carefully. Uh, once, you, uh, once you've once you dispatched your turtle and you've taken the head off, uh, you're pretty easy to go about it. Now these shells, you can't break them. Even if you take a hammer to them, you're just gonna be just bouncing. So what you're gonna wanna do is uh, pull out each of the limbs, back both legs, both arms, and you're just going to be cutting around, separating that tough turtle skin. And as you do that, you can pull each of them away. Because on turtles, if it moves, it's going to be muscle. There's no muscle inside here, just the legs and the neck. Little bite-sized pieces. We're going to keep the skin on here? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's tough stuff. So there's not a lot of meat, in other words, right? Not a lot of meat. Not me. a lot of meat to no. these guys, but... Uh, it, it's good. It's really good meat. Well, we've had the soft shell, so I shouldn't, I shouldn't speak too soon, right? A little muskier. Yeah, little it's muskier. a dark meat. Bob did a good job on uh, cleaning turtles and also probably dulling my knife. 
Uh, it's just kind of the nature of, actually it's not all that bad. Huh, still sharp. It's a lot of digging around inside that shell to get at the, basically the legs. The inside part you can't, can't consume apparently. Um, you know, you're gonna get basically out of two turtles, you're gonna get eight legs and that's gonna be your turtle soup. Now to a lot of you people out there, you might think, why are we doing this? Well, this is day four of the Windless Living Challenge and we're doing no modern foods whatsoever. This is like an SHTF, a post-apocalypse scenario when you don't have any modern foods, but you have some amenities. So the idea is everything's on the menu. Now a lot of people have a really emotional attachment to turtles, but you don't have to. Meaning there's a lot of turtles, there's a lot of individual turtles and taking a few out of the population is not going to damage the population at all. In fact, there's no, there's nothing out here uh, predating on turtles. They basically have free reign and these, uh, this specific species of turtles is very wide ranging. It's found all over the place. So it's very common. I'm going to show you just how much meat you get from a turtle. It's about a handful. Um, but it's a base for a soup. It's not a soup in and of itself. So it's, that's important to keep in mind. Um, yeah, we're, we're throwing it all skin in like that. We're going to eat it. So I kind of want to address things as I go along. This is a whole series. This isn't just us coming out catching one turtle or two turtles. This is actually us living off of the land. We are uh, not going to the store. We're not buying modern food. We're collecting the foods that are available in our environment. So if we happen to catch a turtle here or two, we have to add them to the menu. Um, yeah, I don't know how to, I don't know how to explain that, how to get across to you what it's like to be hungry for four days and just go from meal to meal to meal to meal. It's, it's very tiring and it's very exhausting. Um, and this amount of meat doesn't, it doesn't go unappreciated. We really do appreciate eating this meat. We appreciate all the animals that we, that are providing their lives for us to live, to continue to live. And we're forming part of the, part of the ecosystem, part of the bigger, wider chain. So let's, uh, we're gonna put this guy in some water, add a, a little bit of spice that we have. We're, uh, you know, we can put some wild onions in there. We may uh, go out and search for some and thicken it up with that. But uh, yeah, I mean, we get what we get. So let's go put this guy in the fire now, see what he tastes like. Going up and down this hill all day long is getting old. It'll be nice to move to another camp and continue to get some maybe bigger items. Yeah, this is a turtle soup, but it's a, a red... Red-eared slider. Red-eared slider. Yeah. It's the kind of uh, turtle you buy in a pet store. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know if you're ready for this, but... Here we go, spiceless. Oh, how excited are you for this? I'm ecstatic. <laughs> I can tell. So ready. Aquarium. <laughs> turtle. This is the second time we've had turtle in four days. In two days. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Without spices this w time though. Without spices. Well, we have... <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Gotta be clean out here. Hey look, there's some pockets of fat on top. How do you hope that's fat? <laughs> it could be anything. We do have the world famous Wadobo spices. Did she just splash my leg? I did. Sorry, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. That turtle still wants to swim. <laughs> do you want a sprinkling on there? Or do you want to try... Are you seeing you this? Know, yeah, I'm seeing Are you it. seeing this? It looks, like a, it's like, it looks like it's waving to you. Yeah. This is some, <laughs> this is some <laughs> third world stuff right here, man. <laughs> I did the same thing. <laughs> you you got to eat what you can catch, man. That's, that's what we're at right now. Yeah. Well, that's hot. Yep. 
Oh no, that was close. That almost went in the dirt. That would be worse than what you did. Okay, so if you're going to be offended, that means you're going to be professionally offended. So, you know, this turtle had a good life. Yeah. Cheers, yeah. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> little, little morsel at a time. I don't even care anymore. It ain't bad. You thought, you thought this guy was going to taste worse? Yeah, he's a little musky, but... I don't even... doesn't bother me anymore. No, it's chewy like beef, but... Nah, dude. I'll eat a turtle, but I don't have to enjoy it. My skin, turtle skin's good. <laughs> I'm a big fan. Mm -mm. No? It's tough stuff, man. That's it for turtle soup. We did it. It was good. I'm gonna, we're gonna finish this off. You guys don't want to watch us eat at all. Not so much, no. Um, stay tuned. This series continues. We're uh, we're gonna be on to the next thing just as soon as ten <laughs> minutes pass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. We don't stop. Non-stop. We gotta keep pounding these out. So I got a a claw here. A hoof. A paw. Hoof. Hand. You see the toenails here. You can actually just pull them out. There's a little toenail. So you probably want to do that before you start eating because when you want to swallow that, that might be not good. So basically all you're getting from that turtle is that piece of meat. Uh, you're going to get the skin and all that. So the skin will just peel off. Maybe that's pretty chewy though. Uh, you get all the pieces of meat. I would recommend seasoning it. Put some onions in there, that'd be good. But the whole thing's edible, the whole ham. It's all good. The fries throw it up for dinner. Alright, bless up. Would I recommend turtle? If you can make a proper soup out of it, yeah. But like that? Not really. It's not bad, it's not great. Catfish certainly wins. So, I think Bob's feeling the sugar low. Him and Shauna and Hawk uh, just headed down the way there. He said there's mulberries, you know, for the next two or three hundred yards. I've only ranged maybe a hundred yards from camp at, at, the, at the very most. We spent a lot of time here. And uh, I'm just eating some of our possum soup. This is our, our semi-failed attempt at roasting one. Uh, it, it is good though, it's got the skin on. If you're gonna wanna figure out how to do that, you're gonna have to go back and check, but what we did was uh, I plucked it. I actually plucked the possum. So the nice thing about this is we're kind of ahead on meals. Um, this is still really hot. It'll be good on a, a cool day. As you see the skin here. There's a, a real big piece in there. Just, that's, that's skin. Skin on, man. I'm gonna eat that. Once it cools down, it's all going in. That's uh, straight up calories that my body needs. And the idea is if we get on some more mulberries down the way, we can really pack it in. Uh, we've cleaned up all the trees in this area, so it's time to go. Um, yeah, this is the big adventure. It's day four. We got to start going, start thinking big items now. The hog is still eluding us right now. Hog would be a game changer, a real game changer. But the hog trap's not working out right now. So it's been pretty tough going from meal to meal. It's like the same, you need the same amount of processing to process a big animal as a small one. So. I could just eat this. I'm so hungry right now. Huck's tracking something over here. Chris, yeah, what? Gun. What is it? This is kind of a message for Holden, but I think uh, you guys will actually find it really interesting too. So the right-eared slider, 
that uh, I ate during the Wilderness Living uh, Challenge, season number three, is actually underneath th this box here. And what I've done was I, sh I put a clear coat varnish on it, put like, I don't know, 15, 20 coats that protects the top shell <clears throat> from separating. Because if you leave it, the plates are gonna fall off, um, especially because of the hot sun. If it dried real slow, maybe you wouldn't have that issue. So what I've done is I, I clear coated it, uh, 20 coats, something like that, 15, 20 coats. Every half hour you can recoat, but I've just been doing it throughout the week here. So I've got under this box here and I put it on an ant mound. Uh, and the ants are going to clean out the whole inside of it. So I'm going to just have a peek now and see what's going on. We'll see uh, how it's coming along. So what's going to happen is I'm going to leave it here until it's perfectly clean and then I think Bob's going to ship it back to me. You can see how shiny it is and it's protected. So it's, if we can move this around without getting bit, it's going to be tough. You can see, it smells pretty bad and uh, the inside of it is really starting to get cleaned out. You see the act ant activity down here, i got to be careful. These guys will bite me. Um, you see them puttering around in there? But that shell is getting really good cleaned out. You can see I did mess up a little bit here where the shell is kind of separating, but I'm happy as long as this bottom part peels off, but not the top part. The top part I really like, so I am trying to do my best to protect it. Hey guys, I'm back in Canada, and I've been doing a pile of editing. I want to keep this video series rolling, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to release a video every Tuesday and every Friday. This is going to be going on for about two and a half months. I have 19 episodes in total. So what I'm going to ask you to do is support the channel. What I want you to do, if you can, is please watch the video entirely from the beginning right to the end. YouTube is tracking all sorts of uh, data in their algorithm and what they want to see is a high watch time or retention time. So if you guys can do that and you like the series and you want me to continue doing that, that's one small way you guys can help. Leave lots of comments down on the bottom, not just one but a bunch of them, that helps. Of course, hitting the like button is super easy. You can do that too. And sharing it. If everybody shared it to five people, it would get big really fast. And lastly, if you want to support it monetarily, you can buy a t-shirt. I'm hoping to get some more t-shirts up. If the t-shirts are available, I'll provide a link. If not, you can always offer a PayPal donation that will come directly through me. To me, you can also hit the sponsorship button. It's a new uh, feature that YouTube has added. You click sponsor and it's a monthly uh, subscription. So I think it's $5.95 or something like that. And uh, ongoing supports the channel. So guys, I hope you enjoy the series. Um, if you guys want me to continue doing this, you want me to go to other different places, uh, let me know. If you have access to land, um, you know, private land, and there's a lot of hunting, fishing, opportunities, trapping, that sort of things, and you want to invite me up and a guest or a couple, a couple guests, let me know. Shoot me an email for that. I do not always get to all the comments to do my best, but if it's, a, uh, if it's an important thing like, hey, you want to uh, hook me up with some land and you've got it ready to go, let me know. So uh, I'd like to explore and open different doors and avenues and see where this, uh, this YouTube thing and the survival wilderness living thing takes me. So I would definitely let, welcome some, uh, some offers of getting into new lands all over the world. So let me know.